Hi, and welcome to another episode of 8-Bit Retro Refix. And on this week, this is a joystick giveaway. Um, we have the winner from the competition that I've done over the April months where you're collecting the numbers. This is the joysticks that the uh, winner has chosen for me to restore for them. It, it is a little bit wobbly on there, as you can see, but we'll look into that a little bit later. Um, so yeah, congratulations on the winner. I'll pop his name up right up there now for you to have a look at. Um, and we'll get this joystick repaired now and we'll see what happens and we'll get it posted out to you. It needs a bit of a clean up, it does look a bit crusty inside there as you can see. It's about well dirty in there so we'll give all that a good clean out and see why this is wobbling around like this. So, first of all I'm going to take it over to the 64 and test to see what's working and what isn't working. So here we are over the, the um, Commodore 64. What I'm going to do now is just start up Zaxxon cartridge game. This is just to show us um, whether the joystick's actually performing up, down, left, right, fire. This is the joystick that we're, that we're looking at. It's a quick shot 2 with the auto fire. Quick shot 2 plus. A little bit wobbly on the top if you look. So I'm going to have a look into that and see how that works. You can actually hear the clicks from the micro switches. So it all seems to be sounds to be working okay, but we're going to have to have a look at that anyway. So I'm going to start Zaxxon up and plug this in and we'll see if it actually works or not. So we can see that the left's working, right doesn't want to go. Oh, no. Up and down's okay. Fire button's okay. Auto fire's working. That's good. So really all we need to do is look at left. The right's still working. Just try and go look every now and again. So I suspect that that's a, a bad micro switch inside there. So we'll have a look at that anyway. So I'm just going to reset that so it's not making a noise. So the joystick seems fine. We know that left's not working properly. And, and we've got a little bit of a bad cable down here. So I might look at changing that cable out because I don't think there's much we can do in there. Yeah, so. Okay, let's take this over to the bench and take the screws out of it and then there. Uh, see what's going on inside there. So we're back over at the bench. Um, as you could see when we were testing it, the left doesn't work very well. You can hear the micro switch switching. So I may need to change that micro switch. Everything else seemed to be all okay apart from this wobbliness. So let's just take this apart now and see what's going on in here. So there should be only four screws. So I'll fast forward round this for you, so you don't have to watch me taking these screws out. Okay, that's one, two, three, four screws. Let's put them up there and out of the way. And this cable as well, which I showed you when we were testing it. It's uh, not very good on there, look. A bit wobbly. So it could even be down to these that are faulty. So I'm just going to have a look at that as well, and see if we can change that cable out. I've got plenty more joysticks with that cable and DB, I think call it a DB7 or DB9, I can't quite remember off the top of my head now, I'm sure you guys will correct me. So I've taken the four screws out, so the bottom should just pop off now. Quite a bit in there, look. This seems quite tightly down, it must be that switch under there, which is just hopefully, should just bit a prise up and off. I don't know how they come out. Oh, there you go, it's just fell off, look. That doesn't come out at all. So that comes through there. Hmm, quite intricate inside there for what I thought it was, to be fair. Looks like the micro switches are all fastened down on the board. I might just have to desolder these two wires here. Just so I can get the board further out. 
they're only going up there anyway for the fire buttons at the top. We know they're okay. So I might just drop them off there now. Get me soldering gun. I'm just trying to remove these two wires off here now. So we can see that black one goes down to there. A bit difficult to see really, but just take that off there. Just set that one off there, I think. Yep, that's it. So let's turn that off. There's not really that much to see inside there. They're just the two wires for the fire buttons. That's supposed to sit down there as a washer, I think. It sits inside there. and I don't think there's much that we can do inside there. Have a look at the base. Ah, I see. So the base has a hole in there, so I would imagine that spring's going to sit inside there, and that's what's giving you the springiness. So when I put that back together, I'll pack that out just so it's got a bit of stiffness inside there. You can see that the wires run through that slot at the side, so it's just something around there, around that pivot point on there. I don't think you can quite see. Bring it up, look. So it's just on that pivot point there that goes inside that hole at the bottom here. So that uh, gives you your, your stability on the on the controls that way. So I'm going to try and uh, pack that up to take, take a bit of looseness out of there now. Okay. So here we are. Let's try and have a look. I'll see how these. Switches work. And that's it. So all it is is a spring there, look. When you do is press it, you can see, you can see inside there, look, if I try and bring it up a bit closer. So the bar on the controller sits on there, and you can see the little contact that goes down there, look. That's all it does. So I can't really see anything being really wrong with that, to be fair. Um, so it must be down into these cables. So what I'm going to do is take a picture of these colours and where they went. And then at least we can disconnect this cable from the board. Remember, we don't want this cable anyway if we can help it, because it's got this split in here. But we don't really... One, there's not much I can do about that. I suppose I could try and stuff it inside there and glue it and bond it in, but it's not something that I really like to do. It's only going to pull back out again. So we're going to change this cable as well. So first of all, I need to take a picture of that board. Right, so I've taken a picture of that board now so I know where all the wires go. I'm just going to proceed now and get rid of all them wires off that board and then we'll test all these switches that's on this circuit board first. We might have to let the soldering iron warm back up again. Notice how I emphasise on iron. If you've heard of my other videos I keep calling it a gun. I know it's not a gun but it's just something, <laughs> that terminology that I use. So they all seem okay. There's a capacitor on there. make any difference really. We just want to take these off here. So I'm going to do that now. We'll put a little bit of flux on. That's the flux. If anybody wants to know what flux I use, that's the flux I use. It's really it's for SMD really, but it's no clean. It's all I use. It's quite, it's quite good stuff to be honest. Yeah. Let's see if the older soldering iron's warmed up any.
some of these things out of work because they're getting a little bit tricky. No, nope, the iron's not warmed up enough yet. No, nope, we've still got to wait a bit longer. So I'll skip past until the iron's warmed up properly. Let's see if it's warmed up properly now. Yep, that one's come off easy. Set that one off. Set that one off. All these don't feel very good neither on the connections, they all feel very weak. So that's them off. So we can do away with this now, push that through back through the hole, feed it back through there. And we can get rid of that wire. We don't really want that. So that's the base. We don't need that. We can set that to one side now. You can give it a bit of a clean in the sink. Um, so okay. So let's start testing with the multimeter. So we set my multimeter to continuity. As you can hear a bit beeping and buzzing there. So you can see that's all. Put them two together. Yeah, we've got that. So we'll take the joystick and try and touch these up at the end. I don't know how I'm gonna do this now with it. <laughs> it's gonna be quite difficult to be holding these and try to pull the trigger at the same time. But we'll give it a shot. I'm holding that one. Don't think I'm holding them very well. Let's see if we can do it this way. You need it clicking away, can't you there? So. Yeah, quite difficult to try and do with, with, on your own. So we'll try and put, connect that back up to that. Try and connect that to that. And I'll try and press the trigger with the unit. And we've still got oil. Yeah, you thought that would have done something, wouldn't you? Try that again. Positive. I'll try and use that finger onto that if I can. It's very difficult. Very, very, very difficult. That's onto that. That's onto that. I don't think I'm hitting them properly. No, that's come off. Look. I'm not getting anything from that at all, which is a bit strange. We'll come back to that. So, let's see. What have we got? So I'd say this is your ground. Ground goes round and round to that one and that one to that one. So if I put... I just put my meter against that probe, against that contact there if I can and put that one against there and then try and switch it we don't get anything that's very strange well that's the left side let's try again on this one ah you can see a resistance coming through that one, you see it? On the meter. We've got something that comes through there. So 
It might just be a case of cleaning them contacts up underneath there with a little bit of fine sandpaper. You can see them, can't you? It's very difficult, but I'll try and... Uh, you can see them tiny little contacts under there. That's all that does is go down, presses on that button switch there. So that's all I'm trying to do is get a continuity. So if you look at that, you can see all that's that. So even, even really, even the spring. So in theory, all I, all I really need to be doing is if I put that on the bottom of that trace there, on that contact and then touch that and push down we're not getting anything look we're not getting anything through that you can see continuity there you can't really see on camera what I'm doing but that's to that so in theory when that comes down touches there you see that then that See that? See sometimes it works. So I think it's just a case of cleaning them contacts up. We'll check this one. Oops, slipped off again there. Press that down. Nothing. See that again? You get nothing there, look, nothing at all. What I'm doing is all I'm doing is going in between that and pushing that connector down onto the top. And you can see how it's connecting. So these are all mechanical switches. So there shouldn't be any reason why we can't just clean them connections up. We'll give them a bit of a dioxide if I got some kicking about. We'll put that in. That one works well. Into that one. That one works well. It's just this one. It's just this, you know that one first one that we were looking at? It looks really bad. It doesn't like, like it wants to contact. It's better. It's getting better anyway. So, I can't work out while it's sat here, which is left. So I just flatten that cap back down. That's for the switch for the back. So left would be this one. That's the one that we were having problems with. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take this away and get a bit of fine sandpaper and clean up all them contacts inside these mechanical um, switches and then once I've done that I'll be back. Right so I'm back so what I've done is I've cleaned out the connectors, sprayed some dioxide in these switches, give them a good working over and cleaned all the contacts up on the micro switches um, replaced this cable, thankfully this cable is a, a push on cable um, so we don't need to solder the wires on there, so that'll quite nice and handy. So I've been able to put that straight back onto there, as you can see. So that's easy. If you want to take them off again, you can just pull them straight off, put them back on, change them how you like. And the original ones were soldered on, but we don't need that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is that's finished. We've done this board. That's finished out of the way, so we can set that to one side now. And we can concentrate on this handle part. So I'm just going to have a look inside the here and see what's going on. It all wants cleaning up around that base anyway, so just put a bit. Of... The same size screw. These are the same screws that were in the bottom as well, so it didn't matter about mixing them up.
There's just some through it wire, but they don't wire that way. Let's just take this side bit off. See what's going on inside this angle. So you can see inside this handle, bring it up close to you. We've got exactly the same, haven't we? Look, can you see the micro switches in there? The same as what's on the main board. So I'm just going to try and uh, gently take this apart and get them micro switches a clean. And you can see all the guns around here, so I'm going to take them off, give them a clean up as well. So that should just lift up there. These will be on a spring. So if I pull these down here, just slide that pivot out. You can see that look. Should be a spring inside there that makes them springy. You said the technical name for you. Yeah, springy is a technical name. We should be able to just set that off side there now. The wires should just feed straight up the centre. Stuck on there. The wires come straight up the centre. So that comes out of there. We can then should be able to then lift that out of the middle and we can give that a good clean up. So you can see now, all the base is out. Quite simple really, isn't it? So if I wiggle that, it should just lift out of the way. And if I wiggle that, that should just lift out of its bay. We'll pop that back down there. So they can go off, these angles can go off and go into the sink for a good clean up. I'm not going to take you over to the sink when I clean these up. We all know how to clean things up. <laughs> Pretty much, don't we? Do you know what I mean? Right, fair. The only thing I do want to try and make sure is if this has got a right way around or a wrong way around. Don't think it has. It can go either either. Yeah, so that's okay. So we can just pull that out. All grungy, grungy look. And give that a good clean out. I'm going to clean all this up properly and put a bit of a lithium grease inside it as well just to make it move a little bit easier. So these bits are going to go off to the sink. Um, that's your switch. I don't think the switch will come out of that hole. I'm not really bothered about it coming out of there, to be honest. It can stay put. There will be a way for it to come out. And that's going to go into the sink and have a good clean up. And then we'll uh, start rebuilding it once we've cleaned them up. So, I'm going to take them out of the way for the minute because they won't clean it. There's not a lot of that uh, dioxide left inside there, so. Just give me a little screwdriver, give it a little scrap on the contact. Scrap on the top contact. Bit of a clean, bit of a squirt. Bit of dioxide on there. I don't want to move these wires around too much. You can see there there's a bit of a coil curl that sits in one of the pin screw holes on the handle. So again, just give a little bit of a scrap inside that. They won't work in these, so it's only a bit of a, a bit of a clean really. Just a bit of see if there's any gunge on there. A bit of dioxide again, and that's that done. They were they was working, so we don't need to bother too much with them. So I'm just going to disappear now. I'm going to give them you boxes and the bits and pieces a good clean. So we can slide that off there. Soon put that spring back on and that pin back in and give these a good clean in the sink as well. Okay, so I'll be back after I've given them a wash and we'll get it all built back together and give it a good clean and then we'll give it a good test over in the 64 and then we can get this parceled up and sent it off with the winner of the joystick giveaway. So here we are, we've got these little bits back, we've cleaned all these guys out, sorted all that out. What I'm going to do now is just build this and set back together. Um, give it a good clean off. You can see now, look, it's really clean around the bottom of there. What I've actually done is popped a bit of saw, um, shrink wrap around the bottom of that spring area. Um, that spring area sits into the bottom base plate. Sits into the bottom base plate, into that hole, into there. The wire comes out the side for the, for the fire buttons. But that, that's just to tighten it up in that hole. It should stop it from wobbling it around. Should that little bit of shrink wrap. It's got a little bit worn in there. Spring will have got a bit hardened up. You know, over time, it, it's expected. So just wanted to fill that up a little bit so we can get that back into there. So I'm just gonna build this angle up now. So, first of all, we'll go for these wires. 
um, connectors. So we can see there, look, that that loops, them loops go over the top of there. So if I take that micro switch first and slot that back in there into its little hole, like that. And then where's there? I don't know if you can see there or not. I'll just pop that back out, put them wires over there. Use a switch to guide it and put the switch back into the into the hole. Like that. And we'll forget the other one. Find out where she goes. That goes back into there like that. So that's that one. And the spring, I mean that looks like the big trigger. Is it the top bigger? No, that's the front trigger. That's a big trigger. So when I was pulling this apart, I didn't know which way around it went really. I don't suppose it matters too much. But I remember that spring being down the longest part, come down there. So I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to slide the spring pin up into the first one like that. So we've got a bit of something. And then this one, it can just slide over the top like that. And if we get out of that spring, we can just pull that spring round this side and push it into that hole. So it's all gone back into there, look. So we can slide that back down. And that should be us with this trigger set up. So this part should slot back in there now, if we've got this right. Just put the pin back in the top. That's it, should go in there. That just slots underneath that part there. It doesn't do anything. Just try to jiggle it to get it in place. Get the pin back in. It's a pin in the hole. That's back into there. That's slid up a little bit so we can just slide it back down. So we should be able to slide that up a little bit, hook it over there, and that should slide back into the hole like that. Pin down. So that's for that. So you can see that built back up now. Okay. So the next section is to have fun with these wires. <laughs> and I mean have fun with these wires. We've got to get these wires back down that tube and out at the bottom. And I'm hoping they'll just come straight through. But we've got two choices now. They're either going to go straight through or they're not. We'll try and get these wires back into it. I'm hoping they'll go straight back in. Oops. Uh, no. <laughs> so I'm going to have to do a little bit of guiding for that, I think. That's just popped out of the top of there again. It's going to do, it's going to keep bouncing out, is that, until I, until I get the other piece put on. So I think what I might do is be a little bit sneaky on that one. So if I get a bit of shrink wrap and send that down that tube, I'm hoping that this shrink wrap should go over that other tube, which it does. So I can push that shrink wrap right down there. So now, hopefully, push that into there. Yeah, it don't go through the hole. So much for that idea, eh? <laughs> I thought that might have just done it, but no. So I wonder if I can get away with using that then. We use the original bit of the tube that's in that pipe. And just take that down there like that. And see if I can feed that into that hole. And then see if I can push the wires through. No, I'm just bending over, look. Bending over at the end. Push it right up, down into that tube. See if we've got it at the end. No. So, that shrink wrap tube going so through that hole? No, it doesn't. So we're going to have to find out another way on how to get this through here. 
So I think what I'm going to do just to cheat a little bit is I'll turn the soldering iron back on. I've got some of this wire here, which is what we use for patching up the circuit boards. Um, so break that off there. I don't know if that's come off there or that goes around there or whatever happens with it. Oh, that's better. So if I pull a coil out of the middle, we don't need so much. We'll pull it out. Um, cutters and some cutters somewhere that might just break off. Ah, cutters. Put the cutters there, look. We'll put that back over there, we don't need it. So we've got this bit of wire. What we're thinking of doing is just soldering these two wires together and soldering this bit on the end. And then feed this up through the tube. So if I put that through the tube first, like that. Oops. Put that through the tube first. Just to stop it from doing anything, we'll just wrap that round there. Put it in the tube and wrap that round that spring at the bottom so it can't go anywhere. So we've got us wire up there, look. So I can just solder them onto the end of that. And then I can pull the wires through and desolder them through at the other end. So just remember that if you take these down, they are a bit of a pain to get back through. So I'm just going to get that down there just to get up there a little bit. And I'm going to grip them wires. <laughs> a little bit of solder. Let's see how this soldering iron's doing. Yeah, we've got a way to go yet on the soldering iron. So I'll just skip past that until the soldering iron's ready. The soldering iron's ready now. Put a bit of solder. Tim them up. Just gonna offer that bit of wire up if I can see it. It's so thin is this stuff. So that's got that. Bit hard doing it when he's on camera. But that's got that. So now we should be able to feed that back up there, if we pull that wire off the end of there. Untangle that wire on there. I'm going to find the end of it. Somebody's pinched it. That's pulled that through there, so we should be able to just pull that wire through inside there now. It should go through that hole if I haven't put it too big. Oh, did that go through or did it pull the white? Oh, I think it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Yay! It's through. Okay, so that's through there. I'll just take that wire back off with the soldering iron. So it should just fall off anyway. Like that. Yeah, take that off there. Separate them two wires. <laughs> Turn the iron back off for now. bit of wire and go with the rubbish yeah yeah don't like using it once it's been used it's to me it's damaged I'll leave it you don't know whether the coating's got broken off it or anything like that so if it has then you can't use it further on do you know what I've screwed up on her it has to go on there first before that wire goes through damn Damn! So we're going to have to set that back off again. I don't mind making these mistakes, it just shows that, you know, we make mistakes. Before we do that, we'll put a bit of that stuff around the bottom of there. Just to pop that in. It's a bit of lithium, I'll wipe it off once we've got it all built back up again, but I prefer to put a bit of grease on things, you know, before we go ahead and start building these back up. So, that should go like that. 
You want that? You want them left of there. I know I'm chatting off camera now, but I'm going to have to try and fiddle these back in again now. I hope they go through this time without messing about. But that's how that's to go. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to have to go back to what we did originally. So I'm just going to fasten that back up now. I'm just going to stop camera while I do that. You've seen me do it once. I'm not going to make, put you through the torture of watching it do again. Um, I'm just going to solder that wire back on the end of there. So I'll be back when I've got that back to there. So I'm back. I managed to get that back through there. Look, we're back into the place. That's all good now. So I'm just going to pop these screws back into the handle. make that back more secure than what it was before it was just a bit I don't want it falling out again <laughs> it was a bit of a tough struggle with that to get them through there to be honest right so we've got that back in there we can get this bit of wire off here now because we don't need that on there anymore turn the iron back on again not far off now getting this ball back together and we can go over and test it so if we just drop that off there You'd think the iron would be warm enough, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's it, she's off. Put rid of that white bit of wire. Let's separate these two. Ouch. I don't really want to separate very well, but we'll split them off later. We'll leave the iron on for a bit, because we're going to need it again in a minute. I'm just going to feed these two wires back through this board. Let me pull that out of there a minute. Shove that right down by my there so we're not faffing around with all that lot. We've got the joystick pair, switches at the back. We'll put that into there and these two wires go up onto these connections that we took off before so I think what I'm going to do is just clean them up I might just better clean them up with the soldering iron to be honest don't look too bad yeah let's clean it all up and clean that up a little bit All right, let's see if we can get these back on. So no black goes across to that one there. A bit difficult on camera is this one, but we'll try. Just try to flip it over that way, see if I can see it a bit easier. So, so the black one goes back onto there. And the white one comes around and goes back onto that one. No. Not white actually, it looks like a pinky colour. So they're back on now. I just want to tidy them up a little bit because they look, look a bit crappy. So I'm just going to put a bit of flex on there. It just should help the solar flow a little bit easier on them joints. We'll tidy up as well. Hold the wire in place a little bit, see if it doesn't spring off. Yeah, I don't like that wire. Let me just sort that wire out a minute. Braided. It's on there, okay. That's back on there, okay. That's nice and neat now. So that's them wires back in there now. What I need to do now is try and put that back in that case. Now, 
Um, where's my switch? There's a switch up there. Just drop the switch into the anchor. Anchor point. You can still see it's still a little bit wobbly, but we'll clear that up in a bit shortly. You can see it's still still a little bit wobbly, but we're going to clear that up. Right, so that should be it, to be fair. We just need to try and get the base on now. So that way it should come through there and then it should flop over and lock it in that position there. Like that. So that should be front. So all the wires are going to come trail over around this side somehow. So this is going to be a little bit difficult. Because what I've got to do is, is split it inside of that just down there. I don't know if you can see that down there or not. Try. There's a split just inside of there. And then wires have to go through that. I don't know which way around these are going to go. So I'm going to try and put them in there. It would be nice if I could just... Put that down, but you can see it's all interlinked with each other. So there's not much. <laughs> it's going to be a right faff. I might actually try and have to do this off camera um, and try and fix them in because it's going to be too difficult for me to see, too difficult for you guys to see as well. And um, while I get that wire through that slot, so um, I'm just going to try and get that back in off camera, and then I'll come back to you. So I managed to get that back in off camera. Um, I've actually put. Uh, the four screws back in the bottom because it were easy to do that while I were there. You can see the auto fire switch is still working. If you look at the handle now, it doesn't wobble anymore. Look, a lot more positive is that. So, yeah, that's all done and dusted. I do need to clean these suckers off a little bit more, which I'll clean the base up afterwards. So, we'll take this over to the Commodore now and we'll just check it out and make sure it's all okay. So here we are back over at the 64, got the joystick plugged in, uh, I'm just going to press fire to make it go and start, it should start. I'm going to try it on another control, on another game as well, it's just this one you've got up, down, left, right, and it was left on the, on the system that won't work in properly. Fire button don't work with Pac-Man, so I'm just going to try and stick a Space Invaders or Galaxian or something like that, just to test the fire buttons and the auto fire. So I'm just going to try Pac-Man now, and we'll just see what that's like for up, down, left, right. If I press the fire button on the joystick. So that fire button works, we know that much. So we've got right. We've got left. Left's working nice and dandy now, look. It wasn't working before. And down. Right. Left. And we'll go back. And we'll go up. Testing up. So up was. I press fire. It pauses sometimes. Press fire again, it goes. Sometimes it pauses. That top button look. So we can see fire buttons are working there. So that's working for that. So I'm just going to stop there in a moment. I'm just going to pause the camera, reload a Galaxian game, and we'll check out that fire button. So here we are at Galaxians. I'm going to press fire button. So the fire button's working well. Top fire button. Yep, yeah, that works. Let's see if auto fire works. So switch the auto fire on. Auto fire's working. So there we go, 
That's one Quick Shot 2 joystick, Quick Shot 2 Plus. You can see on there, look, the Quick Shot 2 Plus. That's the joystick giveaway. Congratulations on winning this. It's very, very difficult for me to um, pronounce his name, so I'll pop that back up in the box there and show you his name that's popping up, and I'm going to get this out into you to the post um, first thing Monday morning. Um, so once again, thank you for watching another episode of 8-Bit Retro Refix. We'll see you on the next episode. I do have a couple of other bits and pieces that's coming up. We've got three, uh, two 1541 disk drives. We've got a 1570 disk drive to look at. We've got a Sega Mark III to be looking at. We've got an MXX 64 to look at. And we've also got the Texas Instruments TI-99. Some of these are Japanese, some of them are French. Apparently none of them work, so we're going to be looking at them in up and coming videos in the future. So, I said it before, thanks again for watching 8-Bit Retro Refix. Really do appreciate everything you do for us. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe and hit the little bell at the side to be notified when I'm putting more videos up. Um, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye!